Hi, I'm Slasher here at GameSpot, and I'm here with the Houston Rockets general manager, Daryl Morey, who's here on hand to watch some eSports this weekend. Uh, many of you may know him from the MIT Sloan Sports Analytical Conference in Boston a few months ago, where he was talking about eSports when Sundance, Alex Garfield, and a few other play, uh, people were on stage talking about eSports. The infamous quote from that conference was that eSports someday will be bigger than all the sports that we have now. And that, that comment was debated widely throughout both the sports sphere and the esports sphere for many weeks. Do you still stand by that comment that esports will someday grow past all of traditional sports? For sure. I, I think it's, if you want to know what's going to be the biggest thing, watch what the 10 year olds are doing. And uh, my son's 10 and so spends 80% of his time playing video games. I think anyone who has kids knows, you know, how big that's going to be relative to uh, some of the traditional sports. Now, how do you compare that to sports that you've seen? Because you've been around, you know, the, we see NBA for a very long time. What do you see in this industry that leads you to believe that that will be the case? Well, I think if you you look at the history of basketball, which I know pretty well, um, you look back in the '50s when the NBA was founded, people were. People were playing a lot of basketball, but the NBA was not big. In fact, you go back to like the third or fourth champion of the Celtics, they couldn't even sell out the finals. They were barnstorming through Maine, going to small cities in Maine. No one then thought the NBA basketball was going to be big, and you could argue NBA is the biggest sport in the world, NBA or soccer or the NFL. And uh, yeah, I think if you, see, if you watch what the young people are doing, that tells you what's going to be big later, and I think it's pretty basic. Now, seeing how the NBA had to transform itself over many years and kind of seeing what UFC and you know, MMA have done in the past decade or so, what do you, have to, what do you think that eSports needs to grow at that pace to, to be where you think it should be? Well, I think the history is it takes time uh, and it takes a strong you know, sort of central managing group that uh, you know, creates a consistent championship, consistent teams that people root for, and then and then it takes time. You look at the, the MLS, which is really starting to take off with the soccer league in the United States. Uh, you know, that's take there. I think they're on their 20th year now. That's really starting to take. It takes time, but the reality is, you know, everyone's playing soccer, everyone's playing video games. So over time, I think those are going to be huge sports. What do you think about the current infrastructure of the players, the teams, and the leagues? in esports. Uh, do you have any opinion on how everyone should kind of work together? There's so many different leagues over multiple countries. There are teams that aren't exactly affiliated under one group, and there's no real players association right now. So what do you kind of think of the different factors going on? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's not easy to consolidate that, but when you can is when things take off. I think uh, people, you want to develop an affinity to the team. So, you know, something that allows you to attach to teams beyond team name. Obviously, some of the Korean teams are you know, have a geographical component to it, as do some of the U.S. teams. But, um, yeah, I don't consider myself a total expert, but yeah, I think what you need is consistency and sort of a central group that can, that can uh, organize the sport and create consistent uh, things that are, um, you know, everyone recognizes as, you know, just like the Olympics are, if you win the 100-meter sprint, everyone knows that's you're the fastest guy in the world. You know, you want to get to where this tournament, that's the one where whoever wins, then that's the best person in the world. So you think there should be more of a consolidation of all the different types of leagues under one roof, uh, maybe kind of like a FIFA, where it would be easier for things I understand. Do you think it's kind of too hard right now to kind of see who the best player of the year is, or best team of the year is, because things are so spread out? I, do. I don't think it. I know it. So it, it, you have to get to that consolidation. Sometimes it's messy. Uh, with a lot of a uh, lot of heart hurt feelings around, sometimes it's organized where uh, people can all get together and organize it. But the reality is, you look at the history of any sport; they always consolidate. They always get to uh, because that's you know that's when it takes off. So it's ever in everyone's best interest. And uh, you know, I, again, it's going to happen. It's just how long does it take? And sometimes it's hard. And the sports where it doesn't happen, like boxing, fall by the wayside. Do you feel like these different organizations, like, do you think the players will need a players association? Do you think the teams will all have to kind of work together and come under one roof? Or can all of them work independently but try to uh, work together? Well, I think if you look, I mean, you can evolve as independent teams, but you still need a government body. So you look at the European model for how, how teams uh, get started. 
and uh, they're still independent clubs, independent football clubs across basketball, and, but they're all under an organizing bother, whether it be FIFA or FIBA, uh, and that's allowed those sports to, to take off. The U.S. model where there's one league and the teams are static, there's no relegation, things like that, uh, that's a model that works as well. I don't think the model's important, but you, you, there, consolidation will come. It really just where in the sports history will it happen. Now, I know it's not exactly your feel, but at least in terms of competitive gaming, each of the different games or sports are owned by publishers and developers. Sports in general aren't really owned by any one body because basketball, baseball are just kind of sports that have evolved over for long periods of time. Do you think that having companies that are for-profit involved directly with their sports will hurt the kind of you know openness that is needed to have it be stable? I think it could help. I mean, I think it could help get to a consolidation. I think their active involvement is a good thing. I do think it's a different dynamic. Um, but again, I don't consider myself an expert, but, but just off the top of my head, I think, uh, I think it could help. So one of the main strengths of esports and competitive gaming is actually the uh, availability of people to watch it online all throughout the world at one time. I think the Olympics was a great example this year with NBC kind of dropping the ball, not really being able to broadcast it in real time live to the American audience at least. Uh, what do you kind of feel about how esports um, has evolved in terms of the live streaming and how that's kind of different than the way that sports streams most of its um, games? I think it's the same. I mean, people are distinguished between live stream over the internet and live stream over cable. It, it's no different except maybe the consistency of the delivery of the stream. Um, to me, uh, you know, esports, that's a big advantage they're going to have. I mean, people, people are up at 4 a.m. People, you know, you don't need to have it at 8, 8 p.m. to have everyone be interested and tune in. Um, yeah, I, I think people distinguish too much, you know, live stream cable, live stream over the Internet. Uh, that's going to merge and, and not be differential over time. Now, we've had, uh, you know, maybe some other sports kind of like poker uh, get decently large and, and be on TV on ESPN2 and a few other cable channels. Do you think esports has the potential to get on television? Absolutely. I mean, again, I, I think those things are going to merge where live streams of the internet are going to be like, you look at Netflix, you look at YouTube, I mean, they're moving into being like, uh, to be like major networks. So the difference between being a, a stream over the internet versus TV, I think uh, over time that's going to merge. I think it's going to merge faster than, uh, than, uh, than people realize. I do think, as you point out, the publishers, one of the big advantages of having the publishers be behind these games is the resources they can provide to it. Uh, whereas, you know, in other games that are public domain, you know, they, they, they don't generate 400 to a billion dollars in revenue when, when their game comes out. So I think over time that could really, uh, that could really help the sport. Now in America, at least, we're used to kind of a lot of TV timeouts during, during games, NFL, NBA, every you know, two minutes is a timeout, and then there's a commercial. A lot of esports, there are singular games, kind of like soccer, which may last a half an hour, 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Do you think that, you know, that will be able to get on American broadcast television, or will there still be issues with the way the advertising works um, with how esports is kind of run? Well, I don't think it'll be a problem. It'll be similar to how soccer's broadcast. You could you can overlay obviously ads while they're while they're playing. You have the breaks uh, in between. I think. Uh, you know, because they're sort of in uh, sort of consumable nuggets, you know, the game doesn't take generally sometimes three and a half hours. Uh, you can do different packaging of it and, and really fits the YouTube generation better to sit down and watch a cast of a StarCraft game for, you know, five to 15 minutes versus, uh, you know, being there for three and a half hours. It, it's, uh, it's easier for the generation coming up to sit down and invest that amount of time versus three hours, I think. Uh, I would like to know what your favorite games uh, are to watch. I mean, esports is kind of overlap with many, many different games, maybe about a dozen of them that are in the mainstream. Which ones have you found to be the most enjoyable for you? Well, I like StarCraft because I, I play it. I'm not very good at it. I would get killed by anybody here, but uh, I enjoy watching Star. I played it with my 10-year-old son. I enjoy watching that. I, I want, uh, if, if Civilization wasn't so slow, I'd love to do that. I think I could hang in a Civilization tournament, but I can't, uh, can't hang with these StarCraft players. They're amazing. Uh, you know, a long time ago, could I, if there was a mule tournament, I could have hung. And no one knows that game anymore, but it was like the big, big game in the 80s. So, um, yeah, so I, I really enjoy StarCraft. I haven't really branched out to the others. I don't have much time, frankly, with my day job. So, uh, What is it about StarCraft that is so appealing to you coming from someone that really isn't part of, you know, this industry? Well, I think, uh, I think because it has sort of a set, 
you know, I'm a chess player. I was a chess player growing up. So has a lot of strategy. Has a has a you know different fields, but you know they're more or less set, more or less uh, developed opening moves, sort of like chess. And then there's enough you know sort of randomness thrown in with uh, you know obviously the different uh, mix and you know how the different fights uh, turn out. So I, I think it's just a great uh, balance of skill, luck, and sort of a, a set a set piece that allows you to watch it over and over and see the different strategies evolve. And uh, lastly, there's been kind of this debate that's gone on throughout the entire history of eSports. The name itself was kind of coined a very long time ago to put the letter E in front of the word sports to represent this type of competition. But then there's been much debate on whether it is actually a sport. Uh, the Olympics, you know, they don't really have chess. They've never allowed chess to be inside there. They're probably never going to allow poker to be in there. And there's always debate of whether poker or chess are sports. Do you feel that eSports is a sport? That's a stupid debate. I mean, it really is like, who cares? Like, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, your eSports is going to be in the entertainment business, just like the NBA, just like Major League Baseball. So people tune in. These these are sports. These are athletes. I was talking to Greg. He did 15 matches, he said, in a day. The, the level of mental and even physical focus you have to have to do that is at, easily at the level of uh, athletes in other sports. I don't even think it's a question. And it's a dumb debate whether something's a sport. All right, well, thank you for your time, and uh, I hope to see the uh, Houston Evil Geniuses sometime <laughs> soon. We'll see, yeah. Well, uh, it would be good to, good to have them down and, uh, and, and have something in Houston a little bit more regular. So I appreciate you having me on. All right, thank you.